Hi, I'm Daniel Fuller from the Venant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily community meditation. Where today we're talking about trusting your hands. So the last several days, we've been talking about a baseball coach that I had. It was one of the best hitting instructors that I've ever been around. He had the ability to go in and talk with a group of hitters or a single hitter for just a short talk, maybe 30 minutes to an hour working with them. And the next thing you know, they're a completely different hitter. They're a transformed hitter. And we've been talking about some of the principles that he taught. And one of those is trusting your hands. So yesterday we talked about the principle of the beginning and the end. He used to always teach that the beginning and the end of anything, if the beginning and the end of the swing is in the correct place, then any, everything in the middle tends to work its way out. And that's a principle I think that's true for just about every area of life, because Jesus is the beginning and the end. He's the alpha and the omega. We get the beginning and the end of anything in place. The middle tends to work out. Now, we get the beginning and the end in place. But then there's a middle piece of the swing. And one of the verbal cues that he was used often would be trust your hands. Trust your hands at the point of contact. When you're actually hitting the baseball, trust your hands at that point. And I was just reminded yesterday, I was reading in Deuteronomy chapter 28, I believe it was. And it was talking about the blessings that would come upon the people if God was on their side, if God was for them. And we have that now in Christ. We have this righteousness that's in Christ where we have God on our side. Taking communion today, we've got a reminder that we've got a partnership with God. He's for us. And God was talking about in Deuteronomy chapter 28. He's going to bless the work of the people's hands. And so I think as we go about our day, we get the beginning and the end of our day in a good place. We get off to a good start in the day. We finish the day well. We've got to trust our hands in the middle of the day. And what does that mean, to trust your hands? It means as we go about our work, we go about the things that we do during the day. We trust that God's there. Even though we can't feel him working all the time, we trust that he's there. And it's an interesting thing. When you really hit a baseball... And the same is true in golf and a lot of other sports as well, where you make contact with a ball. When you really hit it well, it's almost like you don't even feel it. You barely feel the contact. And I think it's the same way in a lot of things in our walk with God. When we're really connecting with things, we're making contact with the world, with God's presence with us. A lot of times the best contact, you barely even feel it. You barely even notice it is there. And so we're going to take communion over this today, just asking God to just increase our revelation, increase our understanding that he's with us. He's blessing the work of our hands and to help us to trust in our hands at the point of the things that we do in life. But let's pray first, and then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody who's watching or listening, their families, their friends, everybody connected to them, and all of our church and governmental leaders. And I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And that Jesus was struck down, he was smitten and bruised and pierced and crushed and destroyed. Also that you could be on our side, that you could be fighting for us. And I keep asking that you, the father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you more and more, that the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe, the same power that you exercised in Christ. When you raised him up from the dead, you seated him at your right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, I ask you to bless us and to make your face shine upon us. Let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive everything you've given us in Christ and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today. And help us make the most of those opportunities. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes. 
and do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Say, Father, we're asking for your help today. Help us to understand that in Christ, we've got your blessing and your favor on our lives. You are blessing the work of our hands. Help us to trust in that, to trust in our hands and the things that we're doing at the point of contact where we're actually executing in the world. Help us to trust that you are blessing the work of our hands and to just grow confident in that. And we think of the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in your remembrance of me. God, you laid upon Jesus the punishment that we deserved. And by his stripes, you've been healed. He was crushed and destroyed by you, smitten by you. So that we could be right and holy and perfect in your sight. All through his one sacrifice. And you raised him up from the dead. And you seated him at your right hand. And you raised us up together with him, and you made us sit together with him. And we get this opportunity today to remember, to remember our union with you through the sacrifice of Jesus. And so I thank you for this bread and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and take our bread. And after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. And it's the forgiveness of sins that released us from darkness and transferred us into the light. We get to have this covenant relationship with you, Father. A blood sworn oath in the blood of Jesus. We have a partnership with you. So I thank you for this cup and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and take our juice. All right, so normally after our time of communion, we talk about some practical application into our health and fitness. So as you're doing your workouts, I want you to keep this in mind. Trust your hands. Trust that the things you're doing, the exercises you're doing, God's right there with you. He's right there helping you to execute those exercises, those workouts with you. Trusting in that. Trusting what we call at the point of contact. Where you're actually executing those things. Trusting in those things. But I hope this is enough for you today. If you'd like to learn more about what we're doing in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center dot com.